For the second year in a row, I will celebrate November by answering one question daily about film noir for the entire month. I have a list of about 70 questions that I add to regularly. I used a random number generator in Excel and selected 30 for November. If you agree, disagree, have comments or questions, please list them in the comments. Follow this playlist up here, like and subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Best ending in a film noir. Kiss Me Deadly 1955 is one of the best film noirs. Full stop. Part of this film was homaged in Pulp Fiction 1994. Ralph Meeker, as Mike Hammer, enters the room where Gabrielle and the special package are located. She shoots Hammer before opening the box. When she does, she is consumed by flames. The wounded Hammer frees the hostage Velda, played by Maxine Cooper, and the pair escape to the beach. Mike and Velda look back at the burning house as they flee down the beach and see a strange strobe effect as it burns. Finally, they run into the surf and watch the final destruction. Favorite film noir about boxing. There are so many great film noirs that focus on the sweet science. For this year, my favorite boxing film noir is World in My Corner, 1956. It is my favorite for this year because I just watched it for the first time. The lead actor is Audie Murphy, the World War II hero who is the most decorated soldier in American history. This movie is the story of a poor boy, Tommy Shea, played by Murphy, who wants to make money in the boxing game. He is taken in by a wealthy patron and exposed to the better things in life. It all goes well until he falls for the patron's daughter, Dorothy Mallison, played by Barbara Rush. Tommy's need for quick cash may cause problems with gangsters. There will be a full review of this film coming out this month. Subscribe to get a notification. Best diner scene in film noir. To me, the best diner scene is and will be the film noir The Killers 1946. This film opens with a couple of master level film noir bad guys. Al is played by gravel voice Charles McGraw, and Max is played by smooth voice big actor William Conrad. The two hitmen are determined to kill Swede, played by Burt Lancaster. The remainder of the film, which also features the lovely and conniving Kitty Collins, is masterfully played by Ava Gardner. Sexiest Film Noir One of the sexiest film noirs is The Big Sleep 1946, as long as you don't read the book. Humphrey Bogart plays Detective Philip Marlowe, who is hired to investigate gambling debts incurred by one of two wealthy, spoiled sisters, Vivian Rutledge, played by Lauren Bacall, and Carmen Sternwood, played by Martha Vickers. The dad, General Sternwood, pines for his former companion. Carmen is on narcotics and being bribed for nude pictures. Vivian cavorts with gamblers and crooks. There's a murdered gay lover with a cover-up. And women, Dorothy Malone as a bookstore operator and Joy Barlow as a taxi driver, throw themselves at Marlow. Carmen and Vivian do the same as well. Elisha Cook Jr. is great as a little guy in love with a woman out of his league. Agnes, who was played by Sonia Darren. Favorite neo noir. My favorite neo-noir has been consistent since the 1980s. Of course, the movie is Body Heat 1981, which featured Kathleen Turner as super sex goddess Maddie Walker, who was also a murdering femme fatale. Oh yes, William Hurt and Ted Danson were in the film also. Maddie convinces Ned, Hurt, to kill her husband. She takes the money and leaves Ned to be in prison for the crime. Favorite narrated film noir. My favorite narrated film noir is Sunset Boulevard, 1950. This is the movie that started me watching film noir back in the 70s. When I saw the dead Joe Gillis, played by William Holden, floating dead in a pool and explaining how he got there, the hook was set. Gloria Swanson was fantastic as the rich has-been star Norma Desmond, who tried to recapture her youth through Joe. Eric von Stroheim is mysterious as Max, Butler, former director, and ex-husband to Norma. Favorite Western film noir. There are several Western film noirs to choose from, including The Oxbow Incident, 1943, Winchester, 73, 1950, and The Naked Spur, 1953. However, I will select Blood on the Moon, 1948, because it stars the great Robert Mitchum as the easygoing cowboy Jim. Jim falls for a local, Amy, played by Barbara Bell Geddes, 
of television's Dallas fame. This puts him on the opposite side of a cattle war with his old buddy, Tate, whom Robert Preston brings to life in a sleazy fashion. This movie also has the most realistic bar fight in any movie, and it's not John Wayne knocking out people with one punch. Film noir featuring a painting. Film noirs with paintings are an important category. Films in this group include The Woman in the Window, 1944, Scarlet Street, 1945, and Brute Force, 1947. But a much more chilling film noir centered around a painting is The Two Mrs. Carrolls, 1947. Struggling painter Jeffrey, played by Humphrey Bogart, although married, falls in love with Sally, played by Barbara Stanwyck. Sally will not engage with Jeffrey during his marriage. During a productive period for Jeffrey, his wife becomes ill and dies. It is not long till Sally and Jeffrey marry. Over time, Jeffrey falls in love with another woman. Jeffrey paints a death picture of Sally, the second Mrs. Carroll, as he works to kill her. The reveal of the new painting is shocking. Film noir character you love to hate. In the beloved Touch of Evil 1958, there are some really bad guys. The first that comes to mind is Orson Welles as police captain Hank Quinlan. However, more menacing and slimy bad guy is Uncle Joe Grandy, played masterfully by Akeem Tamaroff. Born in the Russian Empire, Tamaroff was convincing as Joe, head of a Mexican criminal family. In the scene where he has Susan Vargas, played by Janet Lee, trapped in a room, you really fear for her. Favorite film noir shot on location. Because of low budgets associated with most of these films, there are a lot that were shot on location. However, The Naked City 1948 stands above all the others. The city people and the background work as another character in the story. It also gives a good idea of what New York City was like following World War II. Best Richard Widmark Film Noir Richard Widmark made so many great film noirs. It is hard to choose, but I think he had a greater character arc in Night in the City, 1950. As a small-time hood, Harry Fabian, played by Richard Widmark, he tries to take over the wrestling racket. Harry only loved Mary, played by the lovely Jean Tierney. In the end, Harry had to forfeit his own life to save Mary and put some money in her pocket. Film noir recast with current actors. I've made it pretty clear this month that I think Robert Mitchum is a noir god. So this choice comes down to a couple of neo-noirs that Mitchum was cast in. The films are Farewell My Lovely 1975 and a remake of The Big Sleep 1978. Of these two, I feel that Mitchum is better in Farewell My Lovely 1975. Some shocking things from 1946 didn't have the same effect in 1978. Favorite opening in a film noir. When discussing openings in film noir, naturally the first film to come to mind is Touch of Evil 1948. The opening tracking shot is almost four minutes long and is an amazing feat of cinematography. However, my personal favorite is from DOA 1949, where Edmund O'Brien as Frank Bigelow reports to the police that he has been murdered. Best Supporting Noir Actor I feel the best supporting noir actor is Elisha Cook Jr. This little guy played tough guys and wimps with the same style and believability. He was there at the beginning of traditional film noir in the Maltese Falcon 1941. Other important films for Cook Jr. include Phantom Lady 1944 with his drum solo, Gothic Noir Dark Waters 1944, The Big Sleep 1946, Born to Kill 1947, and The Killing, 1956. His roles were always important and affected the entire story. Favorite romance-heavy film noir? My favorite romance-heavy film noir is the Hitchcock-directed Notorious, 1946. Alicia Huberman, played by the beautiful Ingrid Bergman, was the daughter of a Nazi spy. After her father's conviction, federal agent Devlin, played by the suave Cary Grant, comes into her life. The feds recruit Alicia for a mission that results in her marrying Nazi spymaster Alexander Sebastian, played by the incredible Claude Rains. Naturally, Devlin falls deeply in love with Alicia, but can't get beyond her mission. Best Film Noir Shootout or Chase The best shootout in Film Noir is the ending of The Killing, 1956. Johnny, played by Sterling Hayden, robs a racetrack and escapes because Nikki, Timothy Carey, has been paid to shoot a running horse. 
Nikki is killed by the track guard played by James Edward. Four other gang members are waiting at Johnny's to be paid for the crime. A local gangster, Val, bursts into the room and demands some money. A shootout begins and everyone is killed except George, who was played by Elisha Cook Jr. Mortally wounded, he realizes that Val knew about the robbery from George's gold-digging wife, Sherry, played by Marie Windsor. George goes home and murders his wife before dying. Johnny and his girlfriend, played by Colleen Gray, make it to the airport, but the money is scattered across the airfield. Most deserved comeuppance. No one I've seen in film noir deserved the ending he received more than Jeff D. Robbins, played by Richard Widmark in Roadhouse 1948. Wealthy, Jeff D. lorded over the town and his friends. He used women and tossed them away when he was done. When Jeff D.'s friend, Pete Morgan, played by Cornell Wilde, falls in love with singer Lily Stevens, played by Ida Lapina, Jeff D. frames his friend for theft. He then arranges to have his convicted friend placed in his custody, where he continues to torture the couple. When Jefty tries to kill Lily and Morgan, Lily is forced to shoot Jefty, who then dies, not understanding why he was shot. Favorite film noir team. There are so many good contenders in this category, such as Bogey and Bacall, Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray, and Audrey Totter and Annie Body. However, I will go with Nor God, Robert Mitchum, and the greatest femme fatale, Jane Greer, for sheer magnetism. The film where these two sparked is out of the past 1947. Mitchum, as Jeff, is hired to track down Kathy by her lover, Wit, played by Kurt Douglas. Jeff falls head over heels for Kathy. She seems to be in love, too, as long as it's convenient. The character Kathy is a master class in the art of being a femme fatale. Favorite film noir musical interlude. Elizabeth Scott does a bit of torch singing in film noirs, and it's pretty enjoyable. In second place, I would go with Ida Lapina as Lily singing in the bowling alley bar in the film noir Roadhouse 1948. However, my favorite would be Meg Miles as Judy singing Phoenix City Blues while wearing a prom dress in the film noir The Phoenix City Story 1955. Film noir villain. My favorite film noir villain is police captain Hank Quinlan played by Orson Welles in Touch of Evil 1958. Wells was so good in this role as the corrupt detective. He wears an ill-fitted suit, is unshaven, and is mocked for his weight. He is brutal and frames suspects with no regard for the truth. Favorite film noir that isn't a film noir? A movie that is often cited as a film noir that is not is the pre-code film Blood Money, 1933. It's listed on imdb.com as a film noir. Elaine Talbert, played by Francis D., is amazing as a masochist, a nymphomaniac, and a kleptomaniac, but not a prostitute. This film is well on the way to being a Noor, but it's a little early. Favorite Noor television show? My favorite Noor television show is The Fugitive, 1963 to 1967. It starred David Jansen as the falsely accused Dr. Richard Kimball and had 120 episodes. Great Noor actor William Conrad was the narrator. Each week, Kimball fled from Lieutenant Philip Gerard, played by Barry Morse. Kimball looked for the real killer, the one-armed man. Favorite color noir? My favorite color film noir, and some people will tell you there is no such thing, is Niagara, 1953. The views in this film are breathtaking, including The Falls and Marilyn Monroe. People like to say Monroe was not a good actress. If you want to see her run away with a film, check this one out. Favorite foreign film noir? My favorite foreign film noir is Elevator to the Gallows, 1958. It has a great soundtrack, and Jean Moreau as Florence Carella is amazing as things go sideways in this movie. Favorite film noir theme? My favorite film noir theme would have to be the score for Elevator to the Gallows, 1958. Miles Davis scored this movie with his horn, and it's pretty awesome. You should check it out if you haven't heard it or seen it. Film noir character you'd hate to be. I would hate to be Jack Burns, played by George Murphy in Border Incident 1949. When I was watching this, I kept telling myself that he was the star of the movie as the grinding machine moved closer and closer to him across the field. I wasn't sure how they'd get him out of that spot. Holy cow, they didn't, and the machine made a mess of him. At least Pablo Rodriguez, played by Ricardo Montalban, survived.
Best Noir Cinematography. For Best Noir Cinematography, I will have to go with Nicholas Musaraka for Out of the Past 1947. You can't beat how beautiful Jane Greer looked as she entered the Mexican bar. Also, the movie has all the cigarette smoke that was lit on the screen. Great film critic Roger Ebert said, Cinematographer Nicholas Musaraka was a, quote, a master of shadow, but also of light, and Musaraka throws light into empty space between the two actors so that when they exhale, the smoke is visible as bright white clouds, unquote, and, quote, it would be fair to say that Bitchum and Douglas smoke at each other in a sublimated form of fencing, unquote. Favorite film noir actress. My favorite film noir actress has been for a very long time and will probably always be Gloria Graham. This beautiful and amazing actress could play a femme fatale, a victim, or a bad girl with a heart of gold as easily as most people breathe. Some of her film noir roles include Crossfire 1947, In a Lonely Place 1950, Macau 1952, The Big Heat 1953, Human Desire 1954, all right, I hope you enjoyed the Film Noir celebration for this month in 2023. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell on the channel, and you'll get notifications when new reviews come out. Keep it dark.